Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And good morning to you. Hope everybody's enjoying their Wednesday morning. Hope everybody's having a good and productive morning so far. Uh, on this edition of the State of the Saints podcast, we're going to be talking about quarterback Jameis Winston and what he can bring to the New Orleans Saints. And I know a lot of people have been talking about Jameis Winston. Uh, I didn't do a show on yesterday. Uh, some of you probably already know the reasons why. But, you know, I got opportunity to uh, check out some of the things that were, you know, said about Jameis Winston, checked out some of the content that uh, the media is putting out there, or rather it's uh, local Saints media or, or the national media. And uh, everybody seems to be writing the Saints off for some apparent reason. Writing the Saints off, and, you know, I just think that they just have this this huge idea that, uh, the Saints are just absolutely nothing without Drew Brees. And, I mean, that's so far from the truth. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, I, I see a lot of uh, fans of uh, rival NFC South teams think the Saints are going to be uh, dead and buried uh, because of Drew Brees. But I just want to uh, make this perfectly clear to everybody out there in the division. You know, uh, the Saints have the best coaching staff in the NFC South. I say that very comfortably because it's true. Uh, when you look around the NFC South landscape, right, if, if, if they were to lose a certain player on their team, I really believe they'll be in trouble because a lot of those schemes are surrounded by those players. Okay. I mean, you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and how they're structured. You look at how the Atlanta Falcons are structured. You look at how the Carolina Panthers are structured. They're all structured, uh, because, they have the pieces that they need at this particular time to get the job done. If one of those pieces were to fall off, for example, out there uh, in Carolina, Christian McCaffrey, you're looking at the Carolina Panthers suffering because of, right? Christian McCaffrey comes back into the game and they're going toe to toe with the world champion Kansas city chiefs. I mean, you, you look at the Atlanta Falcons, you look at how Julio Jones has missed some time and, and it, it has, uh, you know, caused them some hardship uh, in the passing game. Uh, so all these different uh, pieces that these these teams have collected together generate success. The Saints are completely different. The Saints are completely different because Sean Payton is a master play caller. And he it, the thing that we criticize him for the most is the thing that actually helps him out a lot because he overanalyzed. I mean, overanalyze every situation, right? All different type of scenarios, even if that scenario is probably like a 1% chance of happening, Sean Payton is prepared for it. I mean, we looked at it against the Detroit Lions. So when all the receivers, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, were out of the game, right? I mean, you look at the cornerbacks, you know what I'm saying? They were out of the game. And you see Marquez Callaway stepped up. You know what I'm saying? You see other guys step up, you know, guys that we don't even, you know, used to seeing step up. The first play from scrimmage in the Detroit Lions game, Drew Brees threw the ball to Austin Carr. I haven't seen Austin Carr in weeks. They put him right back on the practice squad. The guy who led the team in receptions and yards was Marquez Calloway. So the Saints are structured very differently than some of these other teams in NFC South. So I, as a as a fan of an NFC South team, I would not be leaving the Saints for dead, okay, because the Saints have a variety of ways of beating teams, okay, rather than beat a running game. Uh, rather there be, you know what I'm saying, a, a little bit of Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston. So the Saints are, by no stretch of imagination, dead and buried, okay? And I'm not falling for this whole, oh, look at the schedule, you know what I'm saying? They can right the ship. Look, any team can beat any other team on any given Sunday. I say that often here on the State of the Saints podcast because it's true. Just because a team has a losing record does not mean that that team won't be game to go up against elite competition. They won't be motivated to try to knock off uh, one of the best teams in the National Football League. So I want people to make that perfect. I want to make that perfectly clear to people who just think that the Saints are just going to coast through it. I mean, the Saints are going to get team's best shot. That includes this game this Sunday versus the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I know how Saints fans feel about Falcons fans. I feel the same way. You know what I'm saying? They haven't won nothing. They ain't did nothing. They're the biggest choke artists in the history of the NFL. We seen it. We laughed. We joked about it all the time. I mean, it, it was a reoccurring thing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So 
I get it. Okay. But at the end of the day, you have to admit that the Atlanta Falcons, they, they try to play the Saints tough and they, they try to ruin the Saints party, just like they tried to do last season. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just like they tried to do last season uh, when they came to the Superdome and they, they put a whooping on the Saints. I just got to be honest about that. Now you look at the Saints without Drew Brees. I um, mean, now you bring in Jameis Winston. Uh, I, I just want to say something also. OK, I want to say something also about Jameis Winston, but I, I just uh, hold that off. Uh, I want to make sure that I acknowledge the the chat here. Shouts out to Tyra, uh, who was first in the chat. Shouts out to R.J. Mason, uh, Jared Poor Jr., uh, Justin. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for being a part of the show. Thank you. And uh, good morning to each and every one of you. I'm going to start with Brian. Brian says, I thought Austin Carr was somebody's uh, family member. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, man, Austin Carr, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, you know, the wide receiver, man, number 80. You know, you, you, you don't really see him as much. Uh, he's been on the team for about three seasons now. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, thank you very much for the $2. Says, I won't lie, I'm terrified of, of throwing PJ's weight. <laughs> I, 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 doubt, I doubt that very highly. I doubt that very highly. <laughs> uh, Jamal says, uh, most of the media leaves the Saints for dead. Well, you know, they, they can do that, but this is a really good football team. Shamika says, good morning. Uh, Rudy says, who that? Ren says, I believe in Winston, and we are built different and better. And Sean Payton is a better uh, coach for Winston. Uh, look, I, I think there's some truth behind that, Ren, but uh, I'll I get into what I think about that a, a little bit later. Uh, Jay says, facts. Neil says, our O-line is one of the best in the league. I think they've given up maybe five to six sacks total. Okay, um, yeah. But some of that can be smoke and mirrors, Neil. I mean, we all know about the greatness of Drew Brees and how Drew Brees is willing to uh, throw the ball to the ground, live to fight another day. Now, with Jameis Winston, you know what I'm saying, I, I, the, the one thing that I feel like separates him from Drew Brees is his ability to not want to fight for another day. Uh, those two sacks that he took in the red zone uh, really just showed you. You know what I'm saying? That's something that I feel like he needs to work on. Uh, look. When you're down at the goal line, you're at the two-yard line, uh, you're going back to pass, you can't take the sack, all right? It's rather you throw the ball uh, on the ground or you try to, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, throw the ball out the back of the end zone somewhere. But you do not take the sack. And that's the difference between Drew Brees and Jameis Winston. Uh, I'm not I'm not saying that the Saints offensive line isn't good. But what I am saying is uh, Drew Brees uh, makes those numbers a little bit skewed at times because uh, he, he is going to throw the ball at the ground. Uh, he's not – uh, going to try to lose yards. He's going to throw the ball away any way that he can, okay? Or he's going to check the ball down. He's not going to try to go out there and try to, you know, saying bombs away it. You know what I'm saying? He's going to take what the defense gives him. And for that, I feel like that's what helps the offensive line look good, even though, I, like I said, once again, I do think they're a good offensive line, but I think they would have more sacks if it, was for, if it wasn't for a quarterback named Drew Brees who, who's, who protects them in, in certain ways. Uh, Nick, thank you very much for the 499 says Winston will be playing for his future. Sean is using this moment to see if they want Winston next season and beyond. Our defense should hold it down. Nick, thank you so much for the 499. I agree with that. This is his moment. This is his time. Uh, you know, all the laughs that, that Jameis Winston gets every time his name is mentioned because he threw 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. But, you know, he did throw for 5,000 yards now. This could be one of those stats can be screwed, uh, it be skewed as well. You know, you look at uh, the fact that he threw for 5,000 yards, you can say it's probably because he put his team in a hole, throwing multiple interceptions in the game. He had to dig his way back out of it. I mean, whatever you want to call it, where you want to slice it, cut it up or whatever. Uh, but, I mean, this is his opportunity to right the wrongs. This is his opportunity to change the narrative of what people think about him. And uh, this could be a little bit of poetic justice for Jameis Winston as well, because, I mean, what better way of, uh, you know, sticking it to your former team than helping the Saints go to the Super Bowl in a place that you called home for five years of your career? So, I mean, this could be it. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine if Jameis Winston helps lead the Saints to the Super Bowl in Tampa? I mean, I think Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans would be sick to their stomach watching Jameis Winston help the Saints go to the Super Bowl and play in Raymond James Stadium. That would be that would be sickening to them. You know what I'm saying? But Jameis Winston can do that. And he has all the tools to do so. Now, 
I want to make this very clear. Uh, I think a lot of people have to, they got to give this guy some time, okay? I, I feel like there's a lot of people in, in the Who That Nation have zero patience for Jameis Winston. I'm seeing people on on social media and, and you know what I'm saying, and on these websites, I'm, I'm, I'm looking and I'm hearing them like criticize this guy um, from the game on Sunday. And I feel like that is not right. I feel like anybody that is judging Jameis Winston based on his performance on Sunday, uh, I just feel like uh, maybe you need to understand what football is all about. And I'm not saying that uh, in a way of trying to uh, dismiss or demean anybody. I just need people to understand that uh, when a game plan is put into place, okay, the teams have their starting quarterbacks. In practice during the week, that starting quarterback gets all of the reps. They get all of the reps. The backup quarterback uh, mostly does something called scout team. Uh, for those that don't know what scout team is, that quarterback is the, the quarterback that, that basically mirrors the tendencies of the opposing quarterback for this week, right? So, for example, if the Saints were to go up against the Kansas City Chiefs, all right, Drew Brees will run the Saints offense and Jameis Winston would uh, – run offense like Patrick Mahomes, right? He would do all the things that Patrick Mahomes would do. He would try to throw the ball down the field. You would see rollouts. So that that's in order to help the defense get an understanding of what they can possibly see going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. So Jameis Winston had absolutely no first team reps, right? He he didn't practice with the first team. He He doesn't have any chemistry with the first team. He didn't do anything with the first team, probably for the exception of Wednesday where they do walkthroughs and very light practice. Drew Brees doesn't practice on Wednesdays uh, due to him being a veteran. But he doesn't have enough time to develop the chemistry and understand the tendencies of the receivers and the running backs that he is going to be in a game with. And he also didn't pro- he did not believe that he's going to play in this game. I mean, for, for the most part, for the exception of last year, I mean, why would you even think you'll be in a game except if the Saints blow out the 49ers like they did the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So when Drew Brees got hurt, Jameis came into the game running the same offense that is catered to Drew Brees. He, he, I mean, he is running an offense that that Sean Payton, Drew Brees, Pete Carmichael sat down and said, okay, we're going to run these plays, these plays, and this is how we're going to get this victory. This week, you'll probably see more of some things that Jameis is comfortable with. And – because he's working out with the first team, I feel like that is going to be the game where I feel like if you want to uh, evaluate the type of trajectory, um, you know what I'm saying, of Jameis Winston, where, where is it going? Is it going up? Is it going down? Uh, this is the game to do it. But last week, I don't feel like it was necessary. I, and I also, I think he did some good things, man. Like that that will, that will pass that he threw to Alvin Kamara on a wheel route, that was a really good pass. But, I mean, we also seen a pass that Jimmy Ward could have possibly picked off. You got to take the good with the bad with Jameis Winston. And I want who that nation members to understand this too, that Jameis Winston is not Drew Brees. And I think sometimes because we have seen such excellent quarterback play, we have seen such great efficiency. We've seen such great accuracy that any quarterback that comes into the Saints organization, I mean, it's it's pretty fair, right? But they're going to be compared to Drew Brees. So anything that Jameis Winston does that is not Drew Brees, like we're going to criticize, we're going to criticize him harshly because of. It. But we have to understand that he is not Drew Brees. Okay, Drew Brees is Drew Brees for a reason. Drew Brees is arguably the greatest quarterback of all time for a reason because of the things that he can do. Some is decision making, and Jameis Winston is not Drew Brees. Okay, so I want the Saints, the Who That Nation, to understand that. <laughs> There are going to be some very good plays that Jameis Winston is going to do. And there's going to be some very bad plays that Jameis Winston is going to do. A Tiger does not change his stripes, folks. I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but Jameis Winston, just because he sits down in a classroom with Drew Brees and, and Sean Payton, that doesn't mean that he's going to stop throwing interceptions or he's not going to, you know what I'm saying? He's going to stop putting the ball into harm's way. That's who Jameis Winston is. Now, Jameis Winston is going to have to, you know, do more good things than bad things. But there are going to be plays, and I'm I'm okay with this, okay? There are going to be plays that 
we're going to look at Jameis and be like, God, dog, man, we got the future right here. Then there are going to be players where we're going to be like, get this bum up out of here, okay? Jameis Winston is going to going to question, <laughs> you know, the question a, a, a lot of things, okay? It might even make you borderline seem like, you know, you bipolar, okay? You might be happy one minute, mad the next minute, happy the next minute, throwing something at the TV the next minute, slamming something on the floor the next minute, and at the same time jumping up, doing a Benson Boogie at the end of the game. That's what Jameis Winston is, okay? And it's going to take some time for him to uh, kind of, you know, change some things around. So I want people to understand that. And, you know, we can't compare him to Drew Brees because who that nation, he's not Drew Brees. And, um, you know, I just want everybody to understand that. But, I mean, he is a good quarterback for the most part. Uh, I do feel like he can kind of just kind of sit back, you know what I'm saying, and learn from, from Drew Brees. Uh, I think that Sean Payton is going to kind of teach him to take what the defense gives him. But that type of uh, mind frame that Jameis has, I mean, it's not going to change overnight, you know. So he's going to uh, <laughs> he's going to really, uh, you know, he's going to really mess with your patience. That, that's just my honest opinion. Now, he might come out against the Falcons, light it up, you know what I'm saying? Like, might throw three touchdowns, 300-plus yards or something like that. Y'all might see some downfield throws, make you happy, you know. And then, you know, you might see some intercession. You're like, man, what the heck was he thinking? So, I mean, that's Jameis Winston in a nutshell, but – I mean, hopefully the Saints can do enough in order to get the job done. And uh, hopefully he won't put the ball in harm's way too much uh, to a point where, you know, it costs the Saints, um, well, some games. Uh, Bronson, thank you very much. Uh, he says, hey, TJ, been watching your show since beginning of the last season. Enjoy the show and your honest opinion on the Saints, whether it's good or bad. Keep it up. Bronson, thank you very much. I appreciate the support and, and the love, man. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, Shamika says, uh, given, I guess you're talking to Kim here, uh, we're a successful small market team. The media hates that. And besides, they wanted this year to be about Tom Lady. <laughs> I like that right there, Shamika with the jab. Uh, yeah, definitely want this to be about Tom Brady. Uh, the Saints aren't in the, the, the Saints aren't in the conversation. Uh, anything that they can do to try to dismiss or demean the Saints or, uh, uh, you know, make it as if they can't don't have to talk about the Saints. They're okay with that, okay? Because they want all of the press clippings. They want all of the attention to be focused on Tom Brady. I'm not even saying the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, look, I get it. You know, I get it who that nation. I'm not going to sit up here and act like I don't get it. I mean, Tom Brady uh, is arguably the greatest quarterback of all time. I mean, he's won more Super Bowl championships than any other starting quarterback in NFL history. I mean, he has... Uh, done some really great things for in the 20 years he played out there in New England. So, I mean, he's going to get the attention. But at the same time, uh, you know, the Saints uh, quarterback who's been doing it out here for the last 15 years, I mean, he's not too shabby himself. And, uh, you know, I just think that, you know, it, it takes a lot of people off, especially when they go head to head, because, you know, I feel like Drew Brees messes with the natural order of things, right? You know, Drew Brees is almost like, you know, if we, let me see. Drew Brees is almost like if you've seen Back to the Future 2, right? All right. So some, some of y'all probably seen uh, Back to the Future 2. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Biff uh, gets into the time machine. You know what I'm saying? Steals a sports almanac, goes back in time, and gives it back to himself. All right. And then it messed with the whole time-space continuum because of what he did. Drew Brees is that sports almanac. Uh, I mean, he, he messes with the he messes with the, the space-time continuum of the NFL, okay? The narrative is that, the Tom Brady is great and nobody can question his greatness and nobody can even be close to him. Right. That's the reason why, you know, they want him to, to win this touchdown record so bad. This is why they want him to play so long. This is why they want him to uh, eventually pad Drew Brees and yards because, you know, they, they don't really like talking about Drew Brees. I mean, there's nothing really exciting about Drew Brees to them, right? Drew Brees is, you know what I'm saying? A, a really efficient guy doesn't have the strongest arm in the world. You know what I'm saying? A family man. You see him and stuff like that. You know, he is nothing really too exciting about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he's he's extremely accurate, but we all know that they love those elusive quarterbacks like Lamar, the ones with the big arms like Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. But you look at somebody like Tom Brady. I mean, a guy who came out of nowhere, you know what I'm saying? A really, you know what I'm saying, handsome guy, a supermodel wife, a supermodel, you know what I'm saying? I mean, superstar lifestyle. And, and, Drew Brees just kind of just, just like I said, the complete opposite. So he messes with that. <laughs> so if 
you're telling everybody, you're telling the whole world, like, okay, Tom Brady is the best, and if he goes up against uh, this this quarterback out in New Orleans named Drew Brees, he's going to outduel him. And the first two times that they actually played each other in the same division, Drew Brees outplayed him. Okay, outplayed him, made him look like that he was the guy that nobody wanted to talk about. So, I mean, he messes with that. Like I said, if you watch Back to the Future too. Drew Brees is that sports dominant. He messes with the entire, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's, he messes with the entire landscape of the NFL and they hate that. They really do. They don't really like talking about Drew Brees a lot. If you look at, if you look at uh, the way they talk about Drew Brees, they just, it seems like, you know, they're just trying to talk about Drew Brees and passing. Like, for example, Drew Brees uh, fractures five of his ribs, right? This is a huge story right here. This is a huge story. Drew Brees, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, the all-time leading passer. But if you look at how his the story is projected or a position on some of these shows, I mean, it was like at the tail end of Undisputed. Can you imagine if Tom Brady was to fracture his ribs? Like, I'm knocking on wood. I don't want nothing to happen to Tom. But can you imagine that? I mean, every media outlet would open their show talking about uh, Tom Brady fracturing his ribs. What's the difference between Tom Brady and Drew Brees? I mean, they're both great quarterbacks. They're both all-time greats. They're both first ballot Hall of Fame. So why is it that Drew Brees gets talked about at the tail end of shows, but Tom Brady gets talked about at the beginning? I mean, I'll let you uh, answer that question for yourself. So like I said, he just messes uh, with the natural order of things. And so do the Saints. So do the Saints, man. Like, you know, the Saints going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that wasn't supposed to happen, right? You know, they don't supposed to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, all these weapons on their team, and they go out there and they shellack them. Nah, bro, that ain't cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many times, like, even right now, they're talking about, oh, the Saints are not going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. They have no chance even with Drew Brees. Really? Really? I mean, the Carolina Panthers went toe-to-toe with the Kansas City Chiefs. They went toe-to-toe with them. Now, I'm not the smartest man in the world, but I have to say that I feel like the Saints are a better football team than the Kansas City Chiefs. So do they really just think that the Saints are just going to go out there and just get, you know, I mean, just get destroyed? That, I mean, that's what they think about. Like, how are the Saints 7-2? Like, how are the Saints 7-2? If they're not a good football team, how are they 7-2? Okay, all the, all the different adversities that the Saints went through this season, and they're still 7-2. One game... They didn't have not one starting cornerback out there. One game, they didn't even have their wide receivers out. And they out there were undrafted free agents. And, and you know what I'm saying? And undrafted rookies. You know what I'm saying? Like, so what the heck going on here? Maybe I'm missing something. And there's really little to no acknowledgement of how the Saints have been winning these games under these adversities. It's as if nobody really paying attention to these things. It's as if Michael Thomas has been here all season. It's as if, uh, you know, Marshawn Lattimore hasn't missed a game. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Janora Jenkins hasn't missed a game. Uh, Manuel Sanders hasn't missed a game. It, it's as if, you know what I'm saying, like uh, Davenport hasn't been out there. It's as if Sheldon Rankins hasn't went down. Like, what what are we doing here? You know, so uh, where's the bridge? Let me see. Uh, the reason uh, being that Drew Brees is uh, taught talk- to the last part of the show is because Tom Brady, Brady, that's it. Uh, they're making money. Yeah, I mean, it, it is about money. Um, it is it is about money at the end of the day. And, you know, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I understand that uh, right now it, it's not about giving you the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's about being entertaining because Neil, the Nielsen ratings don't really care about you talking about, you know what I'm saying, like who's on top right now. That's the reason why you see the Cowboys get talked about at nauseam, even though they don't deserve to be talked about. This is the reason why you will hear them bringing up teams that, you know, like the Green Bay Packers with historical franchise, you know, I mean, historical franchises, the Pittsburgh Steelers, because they feel like these people have a large fan base and them getting talked about more uh, generates attention. But it's almost as if they're trying to program us to believe a certain narrative in the process. Because if you are not giving people the truth, you're not giving them the opportunity to figure it out for themselves. It's like you're pushing and shoving it down their throats. And it's almost to a point where it, it you know, it, it aggravates you as a viewer because you're like, well, 
why is this team not getting talked about? Like, why, you know what I'm saying? This team right here, they're, they're really, really good, but they're not getting attention. And you're finding out about how good these teams are um, if they have an opportunity to have a Thursday night or a Sunday night game where all eyes are on them. But it's not because of the media. And I don't know, man. I just think, you know, we need to change the way that we actually deliver news. I ain't just talking about with just sports. I'm talking about news in general. Because at the same time, I think we rely on the news to give us information. And we have this relationship with the news where we just think that because what they give us is actual facts and we go out here and our whole emotions are are driven, you know what I'm saying, by what we actually saw. And we'll go out here and we'll tell people they're wrong for their point of view, not realizing that our point of view is being shaped by the news. You know what I'm saying? You're telling me that the Saints aren't that good because everybody's talking about Tom Brady. You're telling me that the Saints don't have a chance against Tom Brady and the Bucks because the Bucks have all these weapons, but have you been watching the Saints and seeing what they actually been up against uh, for the leading up to the week nine matchup? No, you have not. So, uh, you know, it, it's up to, it's up to the news to give these people the information, but they didn't do that. So uh, that's, that's the reason why everybody just felt like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were just going to steamroll the Saints. And they were sadly wrong. Uh, Greg says, uh, I'm with you, uh, Jerry. I agree. I don't know what Jerry said. Let me go back up. Uh, Saints fans, relax. We got this. Don't give up because I won't. Well, I hope nobody giving up. You know, I mean, we seven and two. Uh, they're in the prime position. Uh, I don't, like I said, man, Jameis Winston is not like an awful quarterback. I mean, this guy was a first pick overall for a reason. This guy did throw for 5,000 yards for a reason. And like I said, he makes a lot of mistakes, but for the most part, you know, he he does a really good job. I just think that he needs to settle down. And I also can say that Jameis Winston has never had this type of offensive environment around him. Um, his, it, that is not so much on his shoulders. It's, it's not so much on him to deliver. Rather, it was Dirk Cutter as his, as his uh, head coach, right? I think for the exception of Lovey Smith early in his career, like at the beginning, uh, Jameis Winston never really had anybody, you know what I'm saying, or anything that can compliment him. Like when Lovey Smith was his coach uh, before he was fired, uh, you know, Jameis Winston uh, had a defense and he had a running game with Doug Martin to kind of compliment him to help him figure it out. But he was young at that time. And I think with Dirk Cutter, you know, he, him coming in, uh, you know what I'm saying, it, it made the it made the offense like, you know, focus on Jameis Winston throwing the ball a whole bunch. And also now, you know what I'm saying, you have with Bruce Arians, it's the same exact weight. They don't pay that much attention to the running game at all, okay? It was the Jameis Winston show, throw this ball, bombs away. And there was nothing else around him to help him to um, succeed. There were no playmakers around him in the backfield that he can check it down to in order for them to make plays. We know that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the years did not really focus on a running game. I mean, it was running back by committee. Uh, with the Saints, you know, I mean, we get upset with the Saints not running the football because they have the guys that can run the football. If the Saints put emphasis on running the football, the Saints can be one of the best rushing attacks in all the football. I think Latavius Murray, I mean, what he had, you know, he only had a handful of uh, carries, but he averaged 6.3 yards a carry against the San Francisco 49ers last week. And, you know, with Alvin Kamara, I mean, him having about 15 or 20 touches a game, even more than that sometimes. I mean, he's going to get over 150 yards from scrimmage. That comes from him running in between the tackles and also, you know what I'm saying, getting the ball into his hands to make people miss. And, and this can be very helpful for Jameis Winston because now Jameis Winston don't have to worry about going out there. I got to make a play. I got to make something happen. You have all the pieces in place in order to succeed, and it's not just on your shoulders. It's a collective effort, right? You have all the pieces in place for you to be successful. It's up to you to utilize them and i know sean payton is going to put him in a position so he can use those weapons so i think it's a completely different situation now like i said your tiger does not change his stripes you're still going to get some bad with Jameis winston i i'm i'm sorry with that nation it's a fact you're going to get some bad with him but i just think that if people just think that this guy is just god awful and you know what i'm saying he's just incapable of playing a quarterback position i think you're sadly mistaken and I think you need to give this guy an opportunity. And I think that you need to stop paying attention to what the narrative is. Once again, we listen to what the media says to us and it, it shapes 
and it molds us. Hey, yo, I'm waving at my wife and my son. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, you can't let the media shape the narrative of, of Jameis Winston for you. OK, the narrative is, oh, he throws a whole bunch of interceptions. Oh, the narrative is, oh, he had 35 turnovers. Oh, the narrative is, oh, he's not very good. You know what I'm saying it, the narrative is Tampa Bay gave up on him. Look. Don't let that, you know what I'm saying? Like, judge for yourself. Like, people, like, I, uh, another example, right? Let's let's go to Tiki Barber, right, for the New York football giants, right? Tiki Barber, early in his career, fumbled a lot. I mean, he he had fumbleitis. You know what I'm saying? He'll go out there, he'll rush for about 120 yards, but he'll be fumbling football all over the place. Now, the narrative, you know what I'm saying, could have been like, oh, man, he sucked, get him off the field, but – New York gave him an opportunity for him to fix his fumble woes, and he was able to salvage his career towards the, you know what I'm saying, towards the middle and to, to the end of his career. You can't just write people off like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the guy turns the ball over, but at the same time, folks, like, there's a lot there, okay? And maybe it's, you know what I'm saying, like, maybe it's the coaching as well. You know what I'm saying? When Tiki Barber had these fumbling issues, you know what I'm saying, like, the, the head coach that actually drafted him got fired. And you know what I'm saying? That's when Tom Coughlin came in. When Tom Coughlin came in, he was able to, you know what I'm saying, help him fix, you know what I'm saying, their fumbling issues, right? He got the running backs coach that was able to teach him how to hold the ball up high and tight. So this could be one of those situations where coaching can matter to a point where a guy can actually save and salvage his career and change the narrative about how people think and you know what I'm saying and look at him as. Okay, so stop looking at him as the Tampa Bay quarterback. And start focusing on him as a Saints player because I, I see people just looking at this guy, man, grading him like with a with a fine tooth comb, and you know what I'm saying, looking and putting him right under the microscope. Like, come on, man, get this guy an opportunity to be in a Saints system, give him an opportunity to learn under you know under Sean Payton and the offensive staff, and most importantly, folks, man, just get this guy an opportunity for him to flourish because aren't we tired of being wrong? Like, I'm serious. Like, this is this is one of the reasons why. Because I was like a lot of you out there that was very skeptical over a quarterback by the name of Teddy Bridgewater. That's right, folks. A lot of people were debating, was Teddy ready? Teddy ain't ready. Teddy ready. Teddy ain't ready. Everybody was talking about when Drew Brees went down, oh, we're in trouble, this, that, and the third. Okay, we didn't thank him. We didn't believe in Teddy Bridgewater. I am going to even say, to, you know what I'm saying? I did not believe and Teddy Bridgewater the way that I should have. Like, I'm not just going to go out here and criticize everybody and not say what I did. I criticized the fact, you know what I'm saying? I criticized Teddy Bridgewater, and I questioned his ability to get the job done. But he went out there and he won five straight games. Won five straight games, got himself paid out there in Carolina. Changed the narrative of how we saw and perceived Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater went from a guy that we raised our eyebrows like like we was watching a rock back in the day to one of the most celebrated uh, people in the Saints locker room. Like we still have an emotional investment in Teddy Bridgewater, even though he's playing against a rival team in the Carolina Panthers. Like some of us are still turning the TV watching Teddy Bridgewater play right now because of our emotional investment in the guy that we want him to be successful outside of the fact that he plays when he goes up against the Saints. So I am not going to jump out of the window. And I think that we should, quite frankly, be tired of being wrong, right? Teddy Bridgewater as should have taught you to reserve your judgment to all the facts come out. Because really, you just like to me, when you're saying that Jameis ain't writ ain't with it, it's probably because most likely uh you probably saw what he did in Tampa. Or you're you're a Taysom Hill supporter. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? I, I get it, but get a guy opportunity. Rockwell says, everyone fumbles. How many times you drop your car keys? <laughs> Ain't that the truth, man? Definitely. Especially when you is that's that um if you stay in an apartment, definitely if you're trying to walk up the stairs and <laughs> you don't want to go back down to the car after you get groceries, so you put all of your groceries on each hand and you got your keys right there. You try to hold up the groceries and they fall out of your hand. Absolutely, man. I think everybody's been there. Whether you're in an apartment or you're in your house, you don't want to go back to the car. So you try to get all those bags at the same time. And all of a sudden you drop the keys too. I think we all been there. Uh, Let's go back up a little bit. Uh, William says, Jameis 
uh, did have over 5,000 yards last year with all them picks. Yeah. Uh, but it has a lot to do with coaching William too, man. I mean, the Bruce Arias and, and the Tampa Bay uh, offensive uh, staff did not put him in the best position to make him feel, uh, you know what I'm saying, comfortable. Um, you know what I'm saying? That's a play call. I mean, it, it, very little running, uh, running, uh, going on in um in Tampa last year, throwing the ball all over the place. Like, come on, man. I get it. I get uh, football is about throwing the ball all over the place and everything. But man, you got to have complimentary football going on, and and Tampa did not have that. Uh, Charles says your son feeling better. Uh, Charles, uh, yeah, he's doing a little better, man. He's still uh dealing with a fever, man. He'll get down and uh, you know. Uh, he'll go back up again. We'll give him a little Motrin. Uh, you know, we'll give him a little Tylenol and he'll, you know, go back down. But we're just monitoring it right now. I mean, he's in good spirits for the most part. Uh, you know, he, he just, uh, he's a fighter, man. He's trying to do some of the things that he always does. But, you know, he's trying to fight against his body. Like, he'll, he'll be okay when that Motrin get in the system. You know what I'm saying? He ready to do Baby Shark and, you know what I'm saying, and, and let's go hunt and all that. But <laughs> and then when uh, that fever go down, he, he got to lay back down again. But he's trying to, um, you know, he's trying to uh, perk back up, man. So I just give it a couple of days. Uh, we we got his uh, test back, you know what I'm saying, the COVID test. Uh, it, it was uh, it was negative. So, he, you know what I'm saying, that's something that's good. We don't have to worry about that. So uh, we're just uh, trying to figure it out. We think it has a lot to do possibly with him teething. You know, he can teeth in the back of his mouth. So maybe that's the issue. But. Uh, he's doing all right, man. He's doing all right. Gave us a little scare there, you know. I mean, uh, uh, the other night, I don't know if I told y'all this or not. I mean, it's, you know, his temperature got up to like 105, man. We had to end up bringing him uh, to the hospital. And, uh, you know, that was scary right there, you know what I'm saying, when a fee would get that high. So, uh, but he's fine right now, man. So, you know I mean, just, you know, keep him prayed up, man. And uh, if, if you're into that, if you're into a higher power, man, and let just pray for the best right now. Uh but Teddy is like Drew in a way. Uh, he gets rid of the ball quickly. If Jameis gets rid of the ball quickly, uh, he'll be fine. Uh, William, I, I have to agree with that. I would have to agree with you on that. But once again, um, I just think that I just think that for us to think that uh, we're going to always or when Drew leaves, we're going to have a quarterback like Drew Brees. I just think that's. I don't think that's realistic. You know what I'm saying? Even like in, in William, I mean, he did get the ball out on time. You know what I'm saying? It was about timing and stuff like that. Like I agree, but there are some things that uh, Teddy Bridgewater did that Drew Brees did not do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like rolling out of the pocket. I don't know if y'all remember that pass that he threw to Michael Thomas on a rope, you know, against the Chicago bears. I mean, you ain't about to see Drew Brees do those stuff like that, you know, or you know, feel him fighting for extra yards or something like that. Or even with uh Jameis, you know what I'm saying? Jameis, uh, you know, pulled the ball down, got down to about the two yard line. You know, what I mean, you're not gonna see stuff like that all the time. You know, what I'm saying like you're not gonna see that kind of stuff from Drew. So, I mean, there's some things that 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 Teddy does that Drew does, but I mean, they're they're completely different quarterbacks. Uh, expect interceptions. Oh yeah, I mean, like, I already said that. I already said that. You, you're gonna have some interceptions. You're gonna have some interceptions coming from uh, Jameis Winston. I'm not even going to pretend to sugarcoat that. I mean, we might as well just strap in and get ready. You know, <laughs> it, it's going to happen. You know, uh, TJ, how's your son doing? How's your family doing? Yeah, I am uh, getting better. I had a uh, guy sick last week from COVID. Uh, somebody I've been around had it. Uh, didn't tell me. And I'm getting better now, bro. Man, it's good, RJ. You know, you got to be careful out here. You know, you got to be careful. Uh, my son doing fine. Like I said, man, negative COVID test, which is a good thing. Uh, he took two of them, both of them were negative. So, you know, I mean, he's getting better, man. So y'all, y'all see him, uh, running in front of this camera, um, pretty soon in the foreseeable future, <laughs> uh, Bucks going to get y'all in the playoffs. Uh, the Bucks not going to get out the first round of the playoffs and you heard it right here first. I mean, I'm just calling for what it is. The Bucks not getting out the first round of playoffs. Sorry. It, it's a fact like the Bucks. I mean, the Bucks ain't that team. I, I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't know why people are trying to make the Bucks work. I mean, they're a good team for what for what is worth, but they they not that team. You know what I'm saying? Like middle of the pack, uh, middle of the pack, a little bit above average this season. Yes, but they not that team, man. Like, I get it. Yeah, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans they got something to be excited about, but they not that team. I'm telling you, they are not that team. And 
they can have all the talent in the world, but they're not a good football team when it comes to the coaching. I'm sorry. It is. When you're going up against, like, when you go up against some of these other teams, like, who did they play last week? Who did they play? Um, Carolina, right? They played Carolina. Carolina is a brand new team, young coach, young organization, a lot of grit, a lot of fight, which, you know what I'm saying? The score was tied at 17 and Tampa pulled away from the game. Like, this, this, is, what I, this is what I want people to understand. Tampa acting like they just whooping teams, okay? The final score doesn't indicate how the game went. For example, with the Raiders, the Raiders were right there with them until like the last seven minutes of the game, and then they pulled away. So it's not like y'all just run this thing wrecking shop or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like It's like a couple drives that you sustain towards the end of games make the score look like it's just an absolute blowout. They not that team. I, like, I, I'm sorry. Tampa is not that team. And I'm not even saying that to hate. I'm telling you, they are not that team. They, they are not that team. They're going to they gonna be good. They're going to give y'all something to cheer for. But when it when they go up against elite competition, if they were to play Green Bay again, they're going to lose. I, I'm just being serious. They go up against the Rams, then, you know what I'm saying, maybe we can talk. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we can talk and see. But I don't know, man. Like, I, they, I don't know. They're they not that good. Anytime they go up against – elite play callers even time they go up against people that could you know what i'm saying that, that that burn the midnight all a little bit longer than most teams they're gonna fail byron left which is not a good offensive uh coordinator he's not you know what i'm saying he's a he's average so when he goes up against somebody above average he's going to get out scheme todd Bowles is a really good i said really good defensive coordinator not great but really good bruce arians is an above average head coach so anytime he goes up against a guy that's, uh, you know what I'm saying, that that's more talented offensively when it comes to the play calling than he is, can scheme better than he is, he's going to lose. I, I'm telling you, you can have all the talent in the world. You can have an embarrassment of riches. But if you don't know how to use that talent, you are going to lose, okay? Why do you think they lost to the Saints? Because they got out-schemed. They got out-schemed. They got out-coached, out-witted, all that. So for, for Tampa to believe, like, in, in, in their fan base mind that they are that team, you're sadly mistaken. You're sadly mistaken. I guarantee, like, I would be highly surprised. I'm not even trying to hate. I would be highly surprised if Tampa get out the first round of playoffs. I don't even care if they play the Giants. If the Giants, in, if they go to the playoffs and they play the Giants, I think the Giants can beat them. I, I really do. If 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 Daniel Jones was a little bit more of a, a a little a notch further than what he needs to be, they would have lost. I'm telling you, they they are not that squad. They not. They not. They they're good. I, I would give them that. They're good. They're much better than they were last year because they got better. They got more stability at quarterback. But they're not that team. They're not that team. They're a really good team, but they're not that team. They're not the team that everybody trying to make them out to be. I mean, the Saints, the Saints proved that twice. The Saints proved it twice. The Saints proved that they're not that team. Even the Giants proved that they're not that team. Like the Giants. Like, seriously, if Daniel Jones was a better quarterback, these guys would have lost two games in a row. I know it. You know it. And then they don't, ha- and then they don't have a second gear either. Uh, Rams been on their roll. Uh, they're gonna get Tampa. Chosen, thank you very much for the four nine nine. Said Jameis will be fine. He will not be asked to throw the ball over the field like the Tampa. Uh, the deep threat ball is uh, not a must for us, um, and we will manage who that. Yeah, that's true. But I think you are going to see some plays down the field, though. You might see some uh, Deontay Harris plays or Marquez Callaway might see some deep balls thrown. I, I don't feel like, you know what I'm saying, why why would you have a guy that has that that ability to get the ball down the field and don't use it? Um, I, I fail to believe it. And also, you know, like, this is the thing. This is the thing, folks. Um, for all those people that are saying that, oh, the Saints can't, you know what I'm saying, throw the ball down the field, there are plays, okay? I got to get my guy Jeff Nowak on, on, you know, on the show again. Shouts out to Jeff Nowak. Y'all probably know him. Uh, he's been on here a couple of times. He's the one that breaks down the X's and O's. There are plays that the Saints call for them to dial it up. Drew Brees just doesn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
it's probably because he probably sees somebody coming or he probably look at it and be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? He might think about, you know, not, you know, not putting the ball in harm's way. But trust and believe, if Jameis Winston <laughs> sees somebody streaking down the field, or I mean, I don't even care if he think that a safety can get over there. He's going to throw that ball. He's going to throw that ball, man. And he's going to uh, trust those players to make, make those plays. So you might see some, you might see some, uh, you know, some Emmanuel Sanders passes. You know what I'm saying? You might even see some Deontay Harrison, some Marquez Callaway passes down the field. Uh, let's see. Let's say hypothetically Winston plays above average. Uh, Breeze uh, vets healthy and comes back. Will you think Peyton uh, would keep Winston or play Breeze? Uh, he gonna play Breeze. He gonna play Breeze, man. You you know you don't just throw Breeze to the side like that. No. Nah. I, I don't, you know, I mean, as good as Teddy was playing those five games, I mean, as soon as, you know, Drew came back, Teddy went to the, uh, went to the bench. Uh, I hope the next three games are L's. Oh, I hope three games are L's. Well, I mean, I, ho- I hope not. <laughs> hey, let's, if we talking about the Saints, I hope not. We talking about the Bucks, and yeah, why not? Bruce Arians got out schemed by Dennis Allen. Bus goal game wants me to open up the phone lines. Uh, I, I'll see in a minute, man. You know, I, I, I'll see. I'll see if I open up the phone lines in a few minutes. Uh, stop saying Packers are good. Uh, I said the Packers were good. If I did, you know, I mean, I don't want to say they bad. I mean, their division is uh, not that good, but. I mean, they did beat us, you know what I'm saying? But it all came down to a final possession, which if we played them again, the game wouldn't even be close, in my opinion. We we would beat the brakes off those dudes if we played them again. Uh, and Bucks could not beat the Saints twice. I mean, it's pretty much evident here. You know, anybody, any Bucks fan that's still up here talking about, we going to get y'all, we going to get y'all. Like, man, y'all just, I don't know. This is like, this is like you going in a 12-round boxing match and, I'm, I'm beating a, I'm beating you down. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you got a bloody, you know what I'm saying? A bloody nose, a puffed up eye. You know what I'm saying? Your face all swole up. And then you say, man, we fight again. I, I, I beat you. Like, come on, dude. I, I just wax you. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about here? You know, I, I feel like this particular time, many Buck fans still talking about they can get the Saints. They just trying to, I, I, I get what they trying to do. You know, they, they want to be relevant. So they try to, you know how you do it, man. You try to go to the, you know, the biggest, strongest, fastest dude, you know what I'm saying, on the yard, and you try to, you know, prove that you tough, but got whooped. Bucks beat Saints, first round is over. Nah, I doubt that very highly. Uh, if Jameis gets rid of the ball quicker, he'll be all right. I want to know from the Bucks fans out there, what, what have y'all seen that can possibly convince y'all that, they can beat the saints like seriously what what have y'all seen what have you seen from your team against the saints that can really convince you that 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 they can beat them i would like to know is it because y'all beat the raiders and the saints lost to the raiders is it because y'all beat the packers and the saints lost to the packers like are y'all basing the logic off that if you are then that's just stupid you know <laughs> like you know like you had opportunities you had two opportunities to beat the saints the first game y'all you know what i'm saying y'all the saints almost put 40 points on y'all the second game the saints almost put 40 points on y'all y'all scored the first time and the saints like it's not like the saints just came up in there and just beat y'all y'all were red hot y'all were supposed to be the hottest team in the league so I'm I'm just I'm I don't know man I'm just wondering like what have you seen that can convince you that the Bucks can beat the Saints like I'm serious I ain't seen nothing I I I, I have not seen a thing maybe maybe some of these Bucks fans maybe you know what I'm saying like I don't know moral victories or something like that or we bounced back against the Carolina Panthers we put up forty six on them but. Y'all put up three against the Saints. You know, what y'all put up, 27? The Saints, what? I mean, come on, man. Isn't that not even close? 
we can't forget Jameis uh, had LASIK eye surgery this year. The man can see clearly now. Um, I don't know, man. I just look, just won a football game. I don't care what he had. You know, I don't care what kind of surgery he had. As long as he, as long as he go out there and uh, put the team in the best position to win and don't mess it up too bad <laughs> where we just can't come back from it. Uh, where the Kai Johnson says, you said Peyton would outcoach Arians and you was a thousand percent right. Respect. I mean, it's the truth, man. I mean, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't know how to use it, you know, it, it, it's pointless. It's irrelevant. And Sean Payton is a better coach than Bruce Arians. And sometimes it comes down to the coaching. It does, man. It, it comes down to the coaching. You know, I mean, even like, I, I know we're not real big fans of the 49ers, you know what I'm saying? You know, the Bush League tactics or whatever, but one thing you can't say, Kyle Shanahan is a really good head coach, okay? I mean, what he came to New Orleans with, what they actually did in that game, like, if they had another coach that wasn't Kyle Shanahan, the Saints would have beat them guys to sleep, okay? I, I'm just being honest. The fact that they actually were that formidable in that game up to a certain point, uh, show it tells me a lot about the coaching staff of the 49ers, okay? I mean, the 49ers would not be in this position if if they didn't have all these injuries on this team I, i'm serious man that, that's coach that's good coaching right there that's good coach all right that i mean if, if they weren't missing all those different pieces then you know what i'm saying this game would have scared me to death they were coming playing against the saints you know this is one of those this is one of those games where the saints uh should have been you know what I'm saying very very fortunate to catch the 49ers the way they were right now that's good coaching all right like that's you know what I'm saying that that's how you coach a team. Bruce Arians ain't built like that, and neither anybody on this coaching staff. You know, I mean, it, it just it is what it is, folks. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the phone lines. I'm gonna take a few calls. I'll probably take maybe like uh, you know, about maybe like two or three, uh, because I'm about to go ahead and wrap it up, man. I gotta get back uh to doing some things I need to do for the radio station. So I'm gonna take a few calls. Uh, see what you all have to say. Uh, you know, feel free to call in right now. To put the link down in the comments. So feel free to call in. I'll take a few calls. Tyra says, uh, we did it to Carolina. You better ask somebody. Uh, Jameis looked great last Sunday. Uh, Going to look better this Sunday. I mean, yeah. He, what do you, I mean, what do you do? It's like, I mean, your first four passes, I mean, he completed them, so. Hello? Uh, Chosen, are you there? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's good? What's good, man? Good. What's going on, man? Uh, what you got for me? Real quick, man. I, I kind of got the lit, uh, show kind of late. I just wanted to question, man. Do you see um with Jameis, bro? Do you, like, what's your, can you give me, like, a, a record prediction of what you feel? Like, the like like how do you think he can manage this, even with the good and the bad? Like, do you like how do you see this turning out with these next few games? Even if Drew is out for the season, like, what do you see Jameis leading the Saints as a starter? Uh, well, I think that Jameis has the the capability. If, if Drew Brees was to uh, mix, uh, you know, the next uh, what six games or something, like, I can see him going maybe like four and two. Um, I, I do feel like uh, I do feel like he has the the ability to to win all these games. You know, I mean, I got a lot of confidence in, in Jameis. As As I do, I'm bank. not buying the whole interception thing. Like I said, it, he was under pressure a lot, you know, and a lot of those passes, you know, even I said it last year when he was a Bucks fan, a lot of those passes was a lot of tips and, you know, just, just put, I don't see James throwing another 30 interceptions again in his career, no matter where he is. I don't see that right. happening again. I feel like right. those just was, just was a bad stank year. And, um, yeah, I just feel like, man, the intermediate game Sean Payton has, yeah, I know we got the deep passes, but I don't think he'd be asked to, you know what I'm saying? Do that. Then a lot of those times, man, they was trying to throw themselves back into the game. Right. You know, I don't think we'll be down. Like, you know, we never out of a football game. No matter, and we could do that with passing intermediate passes. I think you know what he brings to the table, of being versatile. He could scramble, he could throw the mid range, and he could throw the, the deep ball. So I feel like we'll be okay, man. I don't feel like he'll be asked to do what he was doing in Tampa as far as putting the ball in harm's way. But we don't have many deep threats, maybe two. You know, but you know, that's all I was saying. Man. I mean, but I mean that that comes down to uh, also chosen um just the fact that how Bruce Arians uh, is structured and uh, Dirk Cutter is uh, structured. 
both of those guys are like offensive minded coaches that rely heavily on throwing the football down the field, not running the football at all. So, I mean, it was a lot that, that Jameis has had to do, you know, what I mean? as far as him like throwing the football all over the place, uh, not really having anything to compliment him, especially like a running game. But with the Saints, you know, I can see them actually adding and upticking the, the running game, you know what I'm saying, to help out Jameis. And, and you know what I'm saying in different and variety and in a variety of ways, and not to mention you have Taysom Hill out there with that dynamic as well. So, one more thing before I let you go, um, I hope I ain't you know jumping the gun with this question, but nah. you see us splitting one with the Falcons, or you see a sweep? Honestly, uh, look, I, look, I I got you know I don't really I, I feel the same way about the Falcons as every other Saints fan, but there's a level of respect that I have for them. You know what I'm saying it, because of how I know. That game is almost like they Super Bowl. It's almost like our Super Bowl. No matter what the record is, we want to beat them. You know what I'm saying? So, right. I'm gonna say we'll split with them. You know, I think we're gonna. I think we'll win this Sunday, but I, I probably like in the next two weeks. I think they'll probably end up, you know, beating us. Which I hope I'm wrong, but I think that we're gonna end up splitting with them. Appreciate it, man. That's all I got. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Uh, gonna move on. Uh, Eric, what's going on, man? What's up, man? Yeah, how you doing? I'm good, bro. Um, what you were saying, like, man, like, man, I think the Bucks is a, is a good team and the Saints is a good team. But look at this the last few weeks. Yeah, you're right. The Giants, we could have lost. Um, we should we should have lost that game. And the and the bounce back against the Panthers. Right. That was as a, as a true Buck fan, we didn't. That game was close. We, yeah. Only, only reason, only reason why we went by twenty plus points in those type of games because those turnovers towards the end of the game. Yeah, those, those turnovers. As a two bucks fans, we do. I really think Paul, if we play NFC East in the first round, we might win the first round. And you said if I'm, they play, you said if they play the Saints in the first round. I mean, I mean the NFC East, maybe like an Eagles. Oh yeah, Eagles okay, Giants. okay, yeah, yeah. If you play like the the Giants or, or the Eagles, yeah, yeah we you should know we should win. But look at this. I really think it's hard to beat a team three times in a row in the playoffs. It's hard to beat three teams in one season. Right. But it all depends where they're playing. It. If they're playing at New Orleans or Tampa Bay, because but look at this. Wow. This is gonna be the tiebreaker. If Saints lose the Bucks win out. It's gonna be time for the tiebreaker for the first seed because of the Packers. Due right. to the Packers and Raiders and Bears. That's gonna be crazy. Right. Well, I just think that, you know, me me personally as a as a Saints fan and watching this team, uh, I just think that the media puts too much emphasis on you right. You know, it, this team is like it I, I think they have Bucks, the, the narrative of twenty ten. They have been in the playoff thirteen years. It's, it's right. time. We haven't right. been there in 13 years. I mean, y'all going to the playoffs. I mean, like, look, look, y'all, y'all going to playoffs. Like, I think we all can concede to that. You know, like, y'all going to the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, unless it's like a epic collapse. Like, y'all just don't win no unless, more games. Unless Brady gets you know? hurt. That's, all, that's the only yeah. way we're not going to make the playoffs unless Brady gets hurt. Even if, not, even if that's the case, I still feel, I feel like even with Josh Rosen, y'all can make the playoffs. All y'all have to do is win, what, three more games? out of You know what I'm saying? It's or, tough. We got tough schedule. We got we have tougher uh, schedule. We have tougher schedule than the Saints have right now. We have tougher schedule. I mean, Rams, yeah, yeah, Kansas yeah. City. We come down the stretch. Mm-hmm. The Vi- the Vikings, right. the Lions. No, the Viking first, mm-hmm. then the Falcons, then the Lions, then the Falcons. Y'all, y'all had the y'all had a relatively easier schedule at the beginning of the season. But I mean, we all play the same teams. I mean, for the exception, like, do you guys have uh, a harder y'all... schedule down the stretch? Do you guys have a harder schedule coming down the stretch? Nah, our, our schedule kind of started off a little rough. You know what I'm saying? Like, but we played the we played the same teams. For the exception of like the Rams, I think y'all y'all played a, and you know y'all you played y'all played the Giants and we played the Eagles. So uh, we you, played. You, you guys got Seattle this year? No, That's no, something. we don't. Have, we don't have Seattle. You have 49ers instead. We get Rams. You have 49ers. Yeah, uh huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and the Falcons had the the Falcons had the Seahawks. So that, that was the <laughs> NFC. That was the NFC West team they had to play. But lucky them. Yeah, but I mean, but uh, it's going to be like I said, it's going to be interesting down the stretch, man. Uh, unless, like I said, it's an epic collapse by you all. Uh, I wonder like, who. I wonder who can win the win the division or get the first seat because due to the Packers, due to the Raiders, you won because of the Bear. You won because of the New Orleans because you beat us twice. You won right. that tiebreaker there. 
Well, well, this is the thing. If the uh, if the Packers lose to the Bears, then the Saints would actually jump in front of the Packers because the head to head of the Saints and the Bears. So mm-hmm. if you know, so if the Saints end up having the same identical, you know, what I'm saying like the same identical record at the end, you know, what I'm saying like I think the Packers will probably end up jumping up if like it's a head to head. But if the Bears end up beating the Packers and the Saints. Uh, you know, saying went out, then they will be the number one seed. So mm. because of the head, Bucks still have no chance to get the number one seed now. I think we're ruining that chances. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, it, but if you lose, if you lose to KC, could we play KC? Would we beat KC? You guys lose to KC. Wow. Yeah, but I, mean, I don't know. Still, I, don't, I don't know who's gonna be KC though. To be real with you, the KC man, the Chiefs look pretty good. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, I have seen them pretty vulnerable this season, man. But but every. Panthers should have beat them. The Panthers should have beat the Carolina, beat the Chiefs. To be honest with you, man. I mean, they they could have, man. That was a, that was a tough game for them. <laughs> but Eric, man. I appreciate the phone okay, call, man. man. Thank okay, you man. so much, man. Call back anytime. Yeah. All right, man. Shouts out to Eric, man. You know he a Bucks fan. Um, always uh, watches, you know, the show. So shouts out to him. I'm gonna move on to Justin, man. Justin, what's going on? What's going on, TJ? What's going on? Hey, what's going on, man? I see you on the road, man. Uh, how, how you doing this morning? I'm doing good, man. I had to chime in. Uh, I talked about it this morning on the New Orleans, uh, New Orleans Zone uh, app, uh, mm-hmm. app on right. Facebook this morning. And right. uh, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say exactly what I said. Mm-hmm. Three, three reasons why I think Jamie Winston should be fired. This just this same this the same situation Teddy Bridgewater has got to me. You know, on, on the other hand, last year we was lo- we was up, but he ended up losing that game against the Rams because two reasons in his hand. But we won the game. All right, Jamie right. Winston came out looking stale, looking looking rough, looking rough. Like, and I saw everybody saying, "Oh my God, this man stuck at stuck." Like, well, so he stuck. Yeah, he was thinking it up. But I think if he had the correct prep, uh, have the right preparation this week, he have a full week of practice, and he minus the mistakes. Right. Yeah, he might throw probably one, probably one, uh, one pick or so. But I say that on, on, on the best, the best case of the Saints winning these four games, I think Drew Brees should not even try to rush to come back because we're right. to come back right now. Sit out those four games because we got what we playing four sovereign teams. Basically, well, the five players hard. Now they always do. They act like this. They they stay super fun. But if the Saints do, what the Saints do, they run the ball with Camaro. Get get uh, Michael Thomas back to run. You know, you can tell Michael Thomas ain't really feeling himself. But he get get him get him back to run back into it. Get uh get Jared Cook back into the uh get back to it. Got Al Kamara, the David Murray, run the ball, figure keep. Keep Taysom Hill, please hold on to the football. He's running hard. Hold on to the damn football, please. And then the defense, the defense, they have showed up, showed up for the last two weeks. If they continue to play lights out, do not give up the ball this week to uh, to the Falcons. If they do, if they do that, play lights out. The other hand, uh, the special teams do. They do play good as well. I don't see us win. I, I don't see us losing on those four games that breathe out. I'm, I'm just. Being us switching, he could come back to Kansas City and be happy. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that. Uh, well, me personally, this is what I think they need to do. Um, I think what the Saints need to do is put uh, Drew Brees on IR. Um, I mean, if you if you go on IR, you know I mean you can miss like a total of three games. Right. They need to put the Saints on. I mean, they need to put Drew Brees on IR. They need to sign another quarterback. Right. I don't know if JT Barrett out there, you know, somebody that's for me with the offense. And I think they need to roll with uh Jameis and, and Taysom. You know what I'm saying? So they can do some of the things that Taysom was doing when Drew was in there. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I feel like wow. they need to go that route. And um, like you said, I think they need to just, you know, put emphasis on running the football, but at the same time, uh I think that uh, they don't need to put any training wheels on Jameis, man. I, I don't. You know, I think I think that people acting like this dude is just, I don't know, like just, just hot garbage or something like that. Dude is not hot garbage. You know what I'm saying? And I don't feel like this guy isn't a person that we have to just too much worry about, like, 
not being able to make plays. I mean, this, this, this I've seen this dude throw for like 400 yards, four touchdowns, man. You know what I'm saying? So he, he capable of doing those things. Right, right. But, uh, but hey, man, I appreciate the phone call. Be right, he ain't, no, road, man. he ain't no garbage player. Nah, nah, he definitely not. All right, man. All right, take it easy, man. Yeah, shout out to Justin, man, on that road, man. Uh, Going to move on, go go to Quinn. Uh, Quinn, what's going on, man? Oh, what's up? Hey, what's up, Quinn? How you doing, man? I'm good, bro. You good? Yeah, I'm good, man. Uh, talking about the, the Saints, man. Jameis Winston, uh, what you got for us? You know, <clears throat> I've been thinking about this all day. I already know what's going to wind up happening. Right. So this is going to wind up happening. They about to just trick everybody. What they're going to do is you're going to see Taysom Hill and James Winston going back and forth. Right. I, what they're going to do is the 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 deep routes we do, mm-hmm. they're going to have Taysom in to make them think he going to run that ball. Right. And he ain't going to run. He ain't gonna, I don't think he's going to really be running this game. I right. think he's going to throw it more right. for the deep routes. And I think Jamie's going to be in for the regular snaps like the in the short routes. Hmm. And I think we're going to see um, – I think we're going to see Thomas actually get back alive, you know, because lately the plays they've been running with Thomas, you can tell they just let him get back to his groove. They're not really putting – they ain't put him all the way in, so they just save him. So he's going to be – he's going he gonna to make something happen. Um, Really, going to be good, to be honest. Like, right. I don't think we're going to lose even with or without Drew. I think the rest of the games be good. Mm. Even if <clears> – <throat> I don't think – I think the, the difference from everybody – Compared to us is we we got so many weapons that can do something. And right. just like how you were saying with uh, um James, this is this is first time on the team where he ain't got to do that much because everybody around him is so locked in and they so they so much better to where all he gotta do is just do he just need to leave by four seconds to do something and, he, and we good. Right. You know what I'm saying? He don't have to be in the mix that much. Right. <clears throat> Well, well, I I think I think with that, uh, Quinn, uh, I I just think that uh, the Saints, like you said, they're structured differently. You know, I think that people need to understand that. You know, like this isn't like one of those teams where they just, you know, they can't find ways to win. I mean, we we seen the Saints like winning a a variety of ways. You know, like like we seen them, uh, you know, win games where they just ran the ball a lot. We seen them. Uh, you know, win games where they just was throwing the ball, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, in order to win a game. But the Saints, I feel like, are a very balanced team. Uh, I, I feel like every th- – this is the thing, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and Quinn, you know what I'm saying, you're absolutely right about the statement that you made. You think we should be okay. And the reason why I think that all Saints fans should feel comfortable, and I'm about to uh, – this is the number one reason, mm. because – Anytime the Saints back is against the wall, yep. anytime they have to overcome any type of adversity, mm-hmm. they rise to the occasion. Rather than somebody writing them off, people saying they it's impossible for them to win, they take that almost as a rallying cry. Mm-hmm. So you're probably going to see everybody going to try to, you know what I'm saying, like take the game up just a, just a notch to be able to compensate for Drew Brees not being there. Right. I mean, it, that, that's just my that's just my that's, honest opinion. Because that's just like our defense. I ain't even gonna hold you. I think this game right here gonna be a. I think this gonna be one game we actually do beat them like kind of bad just because. Mm-hmm. I think I think Davis about to go stupid. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah, you hey, know, man. you know he got that little good news about his daughter and all that, bro. That right, man, stupid, bro. I think he about to have one of them games, bro. Yeah, yeah man. If he show up, if he show up and we do something like how we did with Gardner. How we did with CJ? Oh, right. we, it's over, bro. Nobody, they ain't gonna stop us because our defense feeding us right now. That's what's really right. going on. Right, we feeding off our defense more than our offense. Right, and I, it might be a, a you know a get right game for Cam Jordan. You know he loved playing uh, mm-hmm. Matt Ryan. <laughs> so uh, he, he dogging him. Yeah, definitely, man. But uh, Quinn, man, I appreciate it, man. You enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks for the call, brother. You too, bro. All right. All right, man, we're going to move on. Uh, who that Davis, man? Uh, who that? Who that Davis? What's up, man? Yo, what's going on? All right. How you doing? Hey, man, how you doing? I'm, I'm all right, man. I'm feeling good, man. So, talking about uh, Jameis Winston and the Saints, what you got for us? All right, so this is a, this is looking like to be a trap game, in my opinion. And how the Saints can avoid a mm-hmm. trap game 
you don't want to risk throwing Taysom Hill trying to see what you got at him at quarterback. Not only are you lim- right. limiting his potential to be a, uh, a, a game a game swinging player, you're limiting the playbook for Sean Payton and the rest of the offense. You want to keep that right. uh, Atlanta defense honest because they're, they're going to be playing you harder than anybody else in the league. So, mm-hmm. and how can you uh, have James Simpson avoid turnovers? You don't want to. You don't want to restrict him. You want to. You you want him to play to his strengths. Yeah, he's going to hold the ball a little bit. Yeah, he's going to take deep shots. But at, at the same time, you have to understand he's coming off a one year in the Bruce Arians offense. When you look at the past quarterbacks, Bruce Arians has uh has coached. Uh, I forgot one quarterback's name, but the first year he played on the Bruce Arians, he had twenty two touchdowns and twenty interceptions his first year. And the first eight to nine games, he's, he had 11 touchdowns and five interceptions. So, Jamie Swinson got snubbed because he didn't have the second year uh, under Bruce Arians' offense to really understand what what uh, Bruce Arians wants from him. On top of that, he had a abysmal offensive line. He had an abysmal running game that he didn't have uh, to rely on. A defense that was only good at stopping the run. Uh, it was just an unfortunate situation for Jameis Winston. Uh, a a a system like the Saints that uh that can get you where you, that that has you uh that has all these uh, uh these resources for you in terms of you have a sturdy offensive line you have a one two punch in an Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray you have mm-hmm. this share the wealth type of uh offense in terms of receiving core between Michael Thomas Emmanuel Sanders Marquez Callaway. I think we might be getting Traquan Smith back if he clears concussion protocol. Everything is set up to where Jameis Winston can have a good game and go and go uh, into uh, Denver on a uh, with a uh, with with, uh, with momentum. Right. I think Jameis Winston is going to be just fine. I was one of those people last year who was on a Taysom Hill train, and th- th- this season I'm not. There's too much riding on. There's too much at stake for Taysom Hill to be. Uh, for anybody to be wanting a Taysom Hill type of experiment, especially going head to head, you're you're on pace with Green Bay. You are on pace with Green Bay, who was expected to lose maybe one or two more games before the end of the regular season. Right. Uh, I don't want to go too much into it because I'm trying. I'm trying to save what I. I'm trying to save the rest of what I got for uh, later tonight. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, those are my initial thoughts on. I think Jameis Winston is going to be a, a much better option like over Taysom Hill. Okay. I mean, I, I agree with you on that, man. Uh, appreciate the take, man. And uh, good luck tonight, man. Everybody looking forward to the state of the black and gold. Uh, what, 8, 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, man, y'all check yes, them out. Who that Dave is uh, with uh, um, uh, CB is your first guest, right? CB from the Who That Nation chat line. Yes, sir. That's it. Uh, yeah, man. So y'all check them out, man. State of the black and gold. Good luck, brother. Uh, I, I know I'm going to be uh, listening, man. No doubt about hey, that. Man, no doubt about that. Uh, take care. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, shouts out to Who That Davis, man. Y'all make sure y'all support, man. State of the Black and Gold uh, coming out tonight. Um, man, I'm looking forward to that, man. Y'all, y'all got me excited. Uh, shouts out to Everett, man. Everett on the line right now. Everett, what's going on, man? Hey, I got I to gotta sit in and tell you that um, the, the funny thing is when we talk about um, the New Orleans Saints, uh, we talk about past history quarterbacks. We have been through some quarterbacks, man, in the past. Wow. I sit there and think about a lot of people talking about Jameis Winston. Is it the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or is it Jameis Winston or is it the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Think about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They are uh, uh, Trent Dimfler became a Super Bowl champion. Um, Steve Young became a Super Bowl champion. Doug Williams became a Super Bowl champion. And they all played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, okay? Tell me what's wrong with the Buccaneers before you tell me what's wrong with James Winston because I can tell you this. Sean Payton, Sean Payton can coach a quality quarterback. The man was not the number one quarterback in the draft for nothing. You got to take the tools, some of the things that his weakness, and you got to be able to take the time. I think that Sean Payton is going to limit. He's not going to let him throw 30 interceptions. I don't know if that sounds crazy, the Saints don't throw down the field to that much to give you that opportunity. The right. Saints are going to be at the, uh, I'm not saying they're going to be conservative, but I, and then uh, how about call um, Quan Alexander, his first game, 
because of Drew Brees being injured, we're not able to talk about our uh, CJ and, uh, you know, and Demario Davis and all these guys that were dogs on defense. Had you even questioning, was the defense good enough to keep this team together? Uh, the team is actually uh, uh, is feeding off this defense. I told you in the beginning, uh, you know, when you and I were talking, we were talking about the Saints defense. And boy, I agree with you. I didn't know if the Saints defense was going to be a curve, but as usual, the Saints defense finishes strong in the end. They start off very slow. They finish strong in the end. And I just think that uh, uh, David Anyamata, uh, that contract was worth it. Daniel, David Anyamata is a yeah. beast, a yeah. beast, man. I'm telling you. And let's talk about you saying about Clowney. Man, you was up on the Clowney, man. You were yeah. up on Clowney. When you got, when, when the New Orleans have the opportunity to uh when we think about the New Orleans Saints and we're talking about the guys that they drafted Trey Hendrickson Trey Hendrickson right. is no slouch and the Saints D line uh TJ and I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you have it but I want you to know this the Saints uh Dennis Allen we were all questioning Dennis Allen they are the number three overall defense after after if you could have told me this I would thought any of y'all would drive you were crazy okay I think that the Saints have the ability to feed off the defense and run the football with Alvin Kamara, and I think the Saints will be okay. We don't have to put the ball in the hands of, of Jameis to win games. So what you think about that, brother? We got a great field goal kicker. I think the Saints can play defense, and we can control the line of uh, scrimmage. I think about that game for time of possession. Kyle Shanahan was a, is a great, great offensive-minded genius. He kept the ball from Drew Brees. Drew Brees was sitting there rusty, looking. I was questioning Drew Brees in the very uh, first half. He looked, he he looked very rusty because Kyle Shanahan kept the ball out of Drew Brees' hand, mm -hmm. and he was able to win the time of possession. So I'm gonna let you have that, brother, and I'm out of here. Thank okay, you man. once again okay, on man. your great show. Huh? Hey man, appreciate it, man. I appreciate the call in. Thank you so much. All right, man. Shouts out to every man. I'm sorry, man. I was having uh, some some feedback on that. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm trying to look up something real quick, but I, I want people to understand this. Not only is Kyle Shanahan a good offensive play caller, uh, but the defensive coordinator of the 49ers. I mean, this guy's gonna end up being somebody head coach. Uh, I'll be highly surprised if he ain't he's not a head coach next year. I can't think of this guy's name, man, and I feel bad because I mean, this guy is so good, but. They probably have the best combination of offense and um, defensive, uh, you know, minded people, you know what I'm saying, as as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Like, they probably the best in the league right now, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, man, but I agree, you know. But I, I, but to me, to me, folks, you know, I, I, I don't think that we need to be around here acting as if we got to be – handling Jameis Winston, you know what I'm saying, with some, you know what I'm saying, with with some fine gloves or something like that. Like, this guy's been in the league for five years. And I do feel like this, man, you know, we may not put a lot of stock and emphasis into this, but, you know, where a guy goes to play, it matters. Who he has as his coach, it matters. It, let's just say maybe Jameis Winston probably would have had a different type of career if he – Ended up playing for the 49ers or something like got drafted by them or getting drafted by the Saints. Like, who's to say that Jameis would, wouldn't it be, you know what I'm saying, a, a good quarterback? I think a lot of Jameis' issues came from the fact that there was lack of stability. Yeah, yeah, Robert, uh, uh, Robert Sela, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, J thank you, Jared. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. But he's going to end up being somebody head coach. Uh, might be the person that end up going to Atlanta. We never know. Uh, Sanchez, what's going on? Sanchez, can you hear me? Sanchez, are you there? All right. Uh, Sanchez, I'm going to go back to Sanchez. We're having a little bit of issues with his audio. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I don't think that we just need to worry about this guy. You know, I think coaching matters. I think that where a guy goes, it, it kind of helps his success. You know, uh, I just think that it, it's about the way that he's coached. And like I said, man, we cannot compare every person to Drew Brees because that's not fair to that quarterback. Drew Brees is great for a reason. Drew Brees is an all-time great for a reason, folks. Understand it. Like, 
Drew Brees has made us so spoiled as a, a fan base that, you know, anything not similar or not above Drew Brees, like we just we just scoff at. But everybody can't be Drew Brees. And like I said, Jameis Winston is going to do some good things. He is going to do some bad things. I mean, it just comes with the territory. And I, I just don't feel like just because his, his uniform changes, his numbers change, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like he loses a little weight. I don't feel like this, you know, go to stop him from doing some of the things that he he often does. I think it's going to take some time in order for him to make better decisions. Uh, even like back in 2006, uh, when Drew Brees left San Diego, came to New Orleans, Drew Brees wasn't the Drew Brees that we've seen today. Uh, Drew Brees was throwing a ball all over the field, but he, he was having double-digit interceptions too, man. It wasn't until like maybe a couple years ago where we started to see Drew Brees kind of have single-digit interceptions in the season. So, I mean, Drew Brees was getting 12, 14, 15 interceptions in the season. So, you know, I mean, he never threw 30. But, you know what I'm saying, I think it had a lot to do with the fact of who, you know what I'm saying, Drew Brees went to. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Marty Schottenheimer continued to be Drew Brees' head coach, I don't think Drew Brees would be the Drew Brees we know today. Marty Schottenheimer was a run-dominant coach, okay? They talk about Marty Ball. They talk about three yards in a cloud of dust. They talk about running the football to set up the play action. So Drew Brees wouldn't be the, the person that we know that he is today. It took Sean Payton to break him down and to help him see the field. And it, it did help that Drew Brees was very, very smart, intelligent, and he, he had a, a drive to be the absolute best. So I'm not I'm not sitting up here talking about, oh, as long as Jameis don't do this, or as long as Jameis don't, like, look, man, Jameis is a good quarterback. And I think a lot of people don't know that, but I think you will. And I think the combination of Sean Payton as his play caller, I think the combination of uh, what the Saints actually have as for playmakers and and if the defense continue to play the way that they've been playing over the last couple of weeks, I think Jameis Winston will be fine. But I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. And uh, once again, be sure to check out tonight the State of the Black and Gold with my guy, Who That Davis. First guest is for a CB from the Who That Nation chat line. I'm pretty sure that some of you uh, watch, uh, you know, the Who That Nation chat line. If you're not, I don't know where you at. I don't know where you've been. Uh, <laughs> but CB, uh, you know what I'm saying, CB does an outstanding job with the Who That Nation chat line. So make sure you all subscribe to that channel and the State of the Black and Golden. And, and while you're doing all that subscribing, don't forget about your truly, uh, the host of the State of the Saints podcast and the State of the Saints podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast, facebook.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. Previous episodes are available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Anchor FM. And um, while I'm still giving out plugs, man, shouts out to Everett. He was the very last person that called in before Sanchez did. Uh, make sure that y'all check him out on Facebook on the baddest uh, sports show in the deep, in the deep South. Uh, go ahead and check that out. Facebook.com search uh, the baddest sports show in the deep South. So y'all, y'all, he always has some good commentary. Uh, you know, great uh, football mind is on right. He's been on the show as a guest a couple of times. So man, thank y'all so much. Uh, Twitter. Uh, I, I guess I got to plug Twitter state of Saints at state of Saints. Uh, anybody else, any more church announcements in the chat? Hold on, let me see before I go. Anybody else got something to plug? Y'all know how to, you know, I don't mind. Okay. Anybody got some church announcements? <laughs> Thank y'all so much, man. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good and a productive day. Uh, like always, all I got to say is, who that?